Crimson Peak, Tales of Halloween, and It Follows, just a few of the most anticipated horror films of 2015 discussed tonight. This is episode 94, recorded January 19th, 2015. Civil defense officials in Cumberland have told newsmen that murder victims show evidence of having been partially devoured by their murderers. The Survival Command Center at the Pentagon has disclosed that a ghoul can be killed by a shot in the head or a heavy blow to the skull. You guys ready to dive into the uh, most anticipated horror films of 2015? I wish we had theme music. Because <laughs> this, this oh, deserves it. I, this is because <laughs> this is going to be an, an incredible year. I, I look back at the ones we did last year, and it it felt like at the time that we were actually struggling to get a list of ten. This year, it's flooded. I mean, it's just bubbling over. It's enough that we can do spotlight picks and still have a list that's long. And there's going to be things that we're not going to be talking about that we should. Uh, not to mention that if you, if we were to spread out into like, uh, fantasy and sci-fi and superhero films, it would just, uh, get insane. Um, there are some high profile films coming out. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm gonna, I mean, there's that thing with like the robot that attacks the superheroes. And then there's the other thing with like the wars in the galaxy. With robots. Uh, the nebulas, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of robots. There's a lot of robots. Uh, yes, awesome. Avengers: Age of Ultron, which looks spectacular. Uh, Star Wars, Episode awesome. Seven, mm-hmm. um, which also has robots. Yes, <laughs> I guess they call them androids there, right? Or droids? Uh, yeah, and Terminator uh, Genesis, which <laughs> not one to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> or anything I've heard about that looks like. Garbage. <laughs> it looks like garbage. It, it um, really looks like garbage. Yeah, but it is. It is. Well, it is high profile. It is. It's okay. high profile. It's high profile. So what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly go over the uh, the ten that we have selected for the ten to look out for the most anticipated horror films of 2015. I'm going to give you the cast and the director and a synopsis, hopefully, uh, without stumbling too far. And then as a group, we're going to kind of go over all 10 of them together. Uh, it's going to start off with The Lazarus Effect, which is the early entry coming from David Gell. It casts Evan Peters, Olivia Wilde, Mark Duplass, and Donald Glover. And the synopsis goes like this. A group of medical students discover a way to bring dead patients back to life. Thank you, IMDb. That gives me a lot. <laughs> oh, those wacky medical students. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there'll be uh, some interesting things to say about that. Next up is It Follows, which comes out in March from director David Robert Mitchell. The cast includes Micah uh, Monroe, who we last saw in Thomas. The Guest. The Guest. Uh, this one is for 19-year-old Jay. Fall should be about school, boys, and weekends out at the lake. But after seemingly innocent sexual encounter, she finds herself plagued by strange visions and the inescapable sense that someone or something is following her. Faced with this burden, Jay and her teenage friends must find a way to escape the horrors that seem <laughs> to be only a few steps behind, behind. Holy cow, that's just one sentence too long for me. Next up is Insidious Chapter 3. Uh, this is coming from director Lee Wannell. Wannell? Uh, Cass is <laughs> Don Martin Maroney. Why am I doing this? Lynn Shea and Agnes Sampson. Uh, this is the third in the Insidious films, if you didn't get that from Chapter 3. Uh, a prequel set before the haunting of the Lambert family, family that reveals how gifted psychic Elise Rainier uh, reluctantly agrees to use her ability to contact the dead in order to help a teenage girl who has been targeted by a dangerous supernatural entity. Uh, next up is... Jurassic World. Uh, Yay! Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> directed by uh, Colin Trevorrow. Uh, cast includes Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, and Jake Johnson and Ty Simpkins. Uh, this one is 22 years after the event of Jurassic Park. 
Isla Nublar now features a fully functional dinosaur theme park called Jurassic World, as originally envisioned, envisioned by John Hammond. After 10 years of operation and visitor rates declining, in order to fulfill the corporate mandate, a new attraction is being created to re-spark visitors' interest, which backfires horribly. Corporate synergy binds away, Doc. <laughs> nice. The next one is one that revisits us from the last list because two days after we recorded our, uh, the most anticipated for 2014, this one got bumped to this year. It might get bumped again to 2016 for all <laughs> You know, it might, but it's Poltergeist, <laughs> which we have not seen anything from yet, but it's, uh, directed by Gil Cannon. Uh, the cast includes Sam Rockwell, Jared Harris, and Rosemarie DeWitt. And the synopsis is, goes like this. Legendary filmmaker Sam Raimi and director Gil Kanan reimagined and contemporized a classic tale about a family whose suburban home is invaded by angry spirits. When the terrifying apparitions escalate their attacks and take the youngest daughter, the family must come together to rescue her. That sounds like another movie I've seen a couple yeah, years back. Right. Yeah, it sounds really familiar. It sounds very familiar. Uh, I saw that last week. <laughs> <laughs> That's half of the list. The next half goes, starts off with Sinister 2, uh, which is being directed this time by Syrian Foy. And uh, the cast includes uh, Shannon so- Saucerman and James Ranson. Uh, the synopsis is very brief. A young mother and her twin sons move to, into a rural house that's marked for death. <laughs> well, why move in there? If it's that <laughs> no, there's like, did you not see the markings? Okay, if we're gonna ask that question, <laughs> that little, like, there you go. Yeah. Um, and then, okay, now we're in October, and the next three ones, uh, three films entries are all going to be in October. It's going to be a nice uh, fall season. Victor Frankenstein is finally going to see the light of day uh, from director Paul McGinn. Uh, cast in- includes Daniel Radcliffe and James McAvoy. Uh, the synopsis goes as follows. Told from Igor's perspective, we see a troubled young assistant's dark origins, his redemptive friendship with a young medical student, Victor von Frankenstein, and become witness to the emergence of how Frankenstein became the man, the legend we know today. Not to mention, we should also mention uh, the fact that this is written by Max Landis. Yes. Of Chronicle fame, yes. Mm. And John Landis is... Son as well. Uh, up next is which may be the most anticipated one of this of the year is Crimson Peak, from director Guillermo del Toro. Uh, the cast includes Jessica Chastain, Charlie Hoon, and Tom Hiddleston. And the synopsis goes like this: In the aftermath of a family tragedy, an aspiring author is torn between love for her childhood friend and the temptation of a mysterious outsider trying to escape the ghost of her past she is swept away to a house that breathes bleeds and remembers sound good Sounds we'll good. talk about that in a bit doc <laughs> all right two more to go tales of halloween comes from mike Mendez and Friends. We'll go through all the directors later. It is an anthology film. The cast includes Adrian Barbeau, Barry Bostwick, and Barbara Cam- Crampton, among others. Ten stories are woven together by their shared theme of Halloween night in an American suburb where ghouls, imps, aliens, and axe murderers appear for one night only to terrorize unsuspecting residents. The final film on our list is Krampus from director Michael Doherty, who did Trick or Treat. The cast includes Allison Tolman and M.J. Anthony. The synopsis, we get another one-line synopsis here. A demon seeks out naughty people to punish them on Christmas. Hey. <laughs> yeah, go for it, man. All right, so there's our top ten. Real quick, again, The Lazarus Effect. It follows Insidious Chapter 3, Jurassic World, Poltergeist, Sinister 2, Victor, Frankenstein, Crimson Peak, Tales of Halloween, and Krampus. <sighs> I that, that, and that's just a drop in the bucket. Uh, who, who the Thomas? Dive in. What's going on here? Uh, well, with this list, I would say there's a solid amount of stuff that I'm excited for. Honestly, the only ones that really are not attracting me at all are the Poltergeist remake because I, I I don't want to see that. I really don't want to see that. I don't think we really. I don't know. 
need a Poltergeist remake, and I also don't think of like I like Gil Keenan, some of his earlier work, but I, I, I it's hard to really touch this story unless you do something very interestingly different. Um, so yeah, just don't fuck that up. And uh, and see chapter three, but we know why. With that, if you listen to one of our earlier episodes about see chapter two. Um, but all these at least look somewhat interesting. Like with Lazarus effects, just to say, um, that cast is fucking insane. I have no idea why all these people would sign up for this whole movie <laughs> specifically. Because you got like Mark Duplass from the League, Olivia Wilde, freaking Evan Peters, and Donald Glover. Freaking Childish Gambino's in this movie. It's the weirdest thing. Even though that trailer spoils the hell out of a certain death that I don't want to say, but they literally just show a death on screen. And it just feels really, like, cheap and dumb. Well, but I'll see that movie. Yeah, that trailer kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, we didn't know much about it. And then it came out, and it kind of, other than what you're talking about with spoiling to death, it really sells that film. Yeah, I, I do agree. I want to see crazy Olivia Wilde Frankenstein. Sure, who doesn't? Uh-huh. Want to see <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely excited. To me, it seems a little bit like um, a mixture between Flatliners and... Um, what is that Stephen King movie with uh, Pet Cemetery? You know, yeah. where things come back, but they're not quite them. Sometimes that is better, Vixen. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vixen, won't you step in and, and give us some highlights from the from the list? Uh, for me, uh, Jurassic World is number one. I am like a kid waiting for this movie to come out. I love the Jurassic Park movies. Every time they're on, I watch them, all of them. So I'm super excited about that. I'm actually, I know it's going to scare the crap out of me, but Sinister was such a good movie um, that I'm excited for Sinister 2. Insidious, uh, that movie scares me too. I guess I'm excited in that I will be too scared to watch most of it. Um, and then the the last one that we talked, was it Crimson Tide? What is Crimson Peak. <laughs> Crimson Tide. Yeah. That's a I different movie. Like, that sounds like it's a actually a movie. remake. <laughs> <laughs> Tad sounds familiar, but yeah, that one sounds pretty cool. I'm excited for that one too. So those are those are the big ones. Poltergeist. I'm not a big fan of remaking, um, you know, movies that have been done and done well. So I'm not super excited about that one. And the others on the list, I could probably take or leave. But um, those those I'm definitely excited about. Nice, Santos. Anything you want to spotlight on this list? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jump right in there, Santos. Tell us what you think. I mean, yeah, even, even honestly, if you don't, I mean, if they're list, crap, that's not. This list here, our lists, the only things that I'm, I mean, I'm going to see them all because I have to. But uh, Lazarus Effect only interests me because I'd never heard of it before I saw the trailer. And with a cast like that, I, I, I think all of us should have heard of it before. I don't know where it came from. So I'm just curious because it follows. Okay. Oh. The problem is that trailer that we have as of yet isn't very informative. It yeah, doesn't give you yeah. anything oh. except the vague notion of something is following this girl. And why? But that's okay. The mystery Don't is fine. You know, yeah. True. I'm totally on board. Yeah. I'd rather it didn't give away everything like trailers do nowadays. Insidious, I don't, ca- I don't care about Insidious at all. Fuck Insidious. Uh, Jurassic <laughs> World. Yeah. I don't know. Dinosaurs. Woo. Big deal. Poltergeist, I don't think they should remake it. It was inevitable, but... I don't think it should have been remade. So I'm not crazy. Though it's got a pretty good cast. So I'm curious. Sinister 2, I like Sinister a lot. And I like Shannon Sossaman a lot. I think she's kind of cute. So I'll go see that. Uh, I mean, I see it anyway. But I want to see that because I like her. And I like Insidious. Victor Frankenstein. You know, Igor story. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll watch that. I like Daniel Radcliffe. He's a good actor. Uh, Crimson Peak, I want to see. Uh, not just because it's Guillermo, but it's got a great cast, and I, I, Guillermo does atmosphere like 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 nobody else, and I think he can make a great haunted house story. I, I just think it's going to be awesome. Plus, it's a return to him doing period pieces again. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. period pieces, and I'm a big Jessica Chastain person, so I'm mm-hmm. a, she's a hottie. So, uh, Tales of Halloween, I really want to see because I just dig the the format. I like anthologies on the post films and they've got you know great talent you know in front and behind the camera so i really want to see that and krampus i mean you know 
it's Krampus. It's Michael Doherty, uh, you know, and he did Trick or Treat, and he hasn't done anything since. And since Trick or Treat 2 apparently is never going to happen, uh, I, I, I look forward to seeing what this is. Although, you know, I won't believe it till I actually see it. Not to mention, I'm very interested to see uh, Allison Tolman in anything after she pulled off a brilliant uh, portrayal of she was um, in Fargo, Cobb right? in, in yeah. Fargo, the series. Yeah. yeah, she was in Fargo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm okay with those that I said I'm okay with. Now, do you think? Do you think uh, Krampus is a good horror film? I mean, I know it's holiday themed, but will a horror film perform well enough at in December? No. No. Okay. No, I think this will be look more like a limited release kind of thing anyway. Yeah, I don't think it's going to get a wide release. So it's uh, it'll be what it'll be, Doc. Maybe they, if they release it at the end of October. Maybe. Don't release it Christmas week or anything like that. Don't do that, people. Hmm. It's supposed to be like the second week of December. Yeah, that's, that that's not it. That's when all the Oscar stuff comes that's out. It's like a week or two before Star Wars. It's going to get... Oh, I f- and there's that little thing. Yeah, yeah. It's going to get don't drowned out. <laughs> don't want to mess with that. So that, that that's where I'm at, Dave. Dog. Dave, I know you're incredibly, insanely uh, stoked about Tales of Halloween. Uh, tell us about that, and then what do you think of the rest of the list? Yeah, I am actually. As I was looking at the list here, I realized you can really kind of break it in two because you kind of got your major Hollywood releases with your Insidious and your Jurassic and your Poltergeist and your Sinister and your Frankenstein and your Crimson Peak, and I would say of that group. Probably Victor Frankenstein is the one that I'm most intrigued by. Uh, I'm kind of with uh, everybody else so far with the Lazarus effect. It really kind of came out of nowhere. I'm really curious to see what it is. Maybe it's going to surprise us and just be like a a super badass movie. But we just don't know that much about it. But um, uh, it'd be great to see a, another great Frankenstein piece. And I, I think, uh, you know, going from the uh, viewpoint of, uh, uh, of uh, Igor, 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 uh, Igor. <laughs> Igor would be awesome. It's pronounced Igor. <laughs> it, it's good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just not that big of a Del Toro fan. Uh, um, I'm sure Crimson Peak's going to be great, but it's just not really in my wheelhouse. It's not one that I'm that jazzed to see. But uh, I'm hoping that it uh, works out well. Poltergeist, fuck Poltergeist. I agree with uh, Santos. Uh, why remake perfection? What what are they going to possibly show us that that original movie didn't have? It's just dumb. So no reason to go there. <laughs> but then, uh, you know, you got your smaller movies, your It Follows and your uh, uh, Tales of Halloween, Krampus. And I think Tales of Halloween. And, Doc, you kind of alluded uh, earlier today in a uh, messaging back and forth that there, there, is there some kind of a murmur that it may not even be out in time? Is that Was that true or did you read that somewhere? Uh, no. No, I, okay. I, think I'm, I think I might have confused that with one of the other films. Okay. I was going to say because, I, you know, I mean, it's got uh, – just a, a who's who of talent in it. Uh, uh, I, I just don't know what the, with the additions they've added in with John Landis and Adrian Barbeau and, and, uh, you know, some of the, uh, the older, uh, school talent. Uh, I don't see how it can fail. I really don't. And doesn't, uh, Kevin Smith have a Krampus movie as well this year, supposedly? Uh, or well, he's attempting to make a Krampus movie, but I don't know. Knowing how high that dude gets, he was probably just saying something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, do you want to go over the? Do you want me to name off the directors that are going to be in Tales of Halloween? Yeah, go ahead and do that, Doctor. Yeah, yeah, right. do it. Yeah, it's uh, impressive. Darren Lynn Bellsman, Axel Car- Carolyn, excuse me, Adam Girash, Andrew Cash, Neil Marshall, Lucky McGee, Mike Mendez, Dave Parker, Ryan Schifrin, uh, John Skip, and Paul Soleil. A couple of names in there are pretty big. Yeah, especially yeah, the yeah. one that interested me was Neil Marshall. That's great. I love that guy. And we all love Mike Mendez. So. Mm-hmm. Yes, John yes we do. <laughs> this will be John Skip's directorial debut. I believe. Debut. Debut. I believe. debut. debut. <laughs> debut. <laughs> I, John Skip's great. I love his writing. His writing is phenomenal. Back in the old Skip Inspector days, that uh, splatter punk yeah. shit they used to write was yeah, it was some it was some intense Off shit. The hook. Yeah, that was some crazy shit they used to write. In fact, Ryan Schiffen is the son of Lalo Schiffen, Lalo the Schiffen. Uh, prolific uh, Amer- uh, composer for stuff like the original Dirty Harry and Bullet and a bunch of stuff. Wow. Like that. Yeah, he yeah. directed a Bigfoot movie. A yeah, he had a Bigfoot movie. movie. I remember that. And it was yeah. actually pretty good. It was actually uh, pretty I don't remember the name of it. Was that, was that 
I was I, it was one word title. What the hell was it? Yeah. Was it, uh, was it Abominable? Uh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good movie. Abominable. Yes. It yeah, was a good movie. Paul, Paul Solette, of course, did Grace, which was a really Grace fucking disturbing crazy. movie. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Grace. Y'all guys, did you guys see Grace? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I've heard, no, I've heard of Grace. Yeah. Grace. Yeah. I, I had to a, buy Grace, man, because Grace is so yeah, that, was a, that was a kick ass movie. I'm sitting here yeah. looking at it on my shelf right now. I'm like, holy yeah, fuck, I'm going to have to rewatch that. Grace is awesome. The ending is like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, Grace is awesome. So, so lots of good stuff in Tales of Halloween. If these guys, uh, you know, live up to the potential on this one, it could be a, it could be a monster. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to everyone on this list, uh, even Poltergeist, uh, uh, but with uh, reservation. Uh, now, what, what makes me more worried is that Sam Rockwell came out recently talking about it, and it, I, I get the feeling he doesn't. Re- he either <laughs> he's either 100 percent correct and we're all doomed, or he doesn't know what he's talking about. And I'm not sure which one it is. What did he say? Uh, he was saying that it's going to be. Qu- was the quote? How did I get in this? Piece? How did I get in this? Uh, no, he said it was going to be more like a um, a kid's picture. Ah, ah. But, uh, uh, yeah, because it's it's told from the point of view of the the son. Uh, I mean, the like, there's there's something that you could do with that, but I think the I don't know. I think the bigger problem is like, what is going to make it worthy of being called Poltergeist, like a good remake would, as opposed to just being a haunted house movie with the Poltergeist thing slapped over maybe a couple of lame references that yeah. don't, don't need to be there. And, uh, you know, I was, I think I was the only one here that liked Insidious Chapter Two. Um, oh boy. And I'm looking forward I to think the third one. I liked one. what I saw of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I liked how they tied it together with the first one. I, I'm, I'm alone in this, but, um, I'm I'm still looking forward to this. Uh, Thomas, Thomas, I I I I don't recall exactly. Didn't we call that like the biggest disappointment of? Oh, you guys, no, no. Okay, just want to be sure. Uh, make sure I'm not saying anything out of out of line here. And, but but at least like I'm at least glad that they're trying to do something different with it by focusing on. Um, the investigators, even though I hate the uh, the the two assistant investigators who are awful, awful, dumb, unfunny characters, <laughs> but I like Lin Che. I wouldn't mind seeing Lin Che lead a movie. Well, I want to I want to say this that you know we did uh, Sinister Two and uh, Insidious Chapter Three, uh, their sequels. There aren't too many other sequels to be chosen from. Uh, I think Activity Paranormal Activity Five, if it comes out this year. Which is one of the reasons. It will not come out in March. Um, no, I, like, I can't imagine unless they've already shot it and we don't know, which isn't <laughs> out of the question. Like, it's only taking like five days to make that movie. Right. Uh, but that's like the only other one that's really big to, you know, to look at other than, you know, like VOD pictures. And that's, that's pretty big, I think. There are. Well, no- this year, when we to the spotlight stock, I'll be talking about a sequel. Uh, yes, but, uh, that's kind of on a different par. <laughs> uh, there are a number of uh, remakes, you know, Poltergeist, uh, some that may or may not make it out this year. There's a Friday the 13th reboot. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to, not sure that's going to make it. Uh, Plan 9. Somebody here may know about that. Uh, a Cabin Fever, that which is, if I'm, do I remember this right, Dave, that they basically reshot the same script? That's exactly right. There was, there was uh, some, Supposedly a shot for shot remake. And I don't, that's already not worked before, right? So do you remember Psycho, <laughs> a, right? A, a strong case could be made for that, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, there's big names in some. Uh, we've got uh, Schwarzenegger is going to make a, a movie called Maggie, or he's made the movie, it's coming out. Uh, Abigail for, Breslin, right? Yeah, and he's the, he is the uh, father of a girl that turns into a zombie. Yeah. Uh, Rob Zombie has a film coming out, 31. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan has, uh, The Visit coming out. There's, there's tons of stuff. Uh, and Thomas, there's one I wanted to bring to your attention because I think you like this director. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but Cranks, uh, Mark, uh, Neville Dean. Okay. Do you like the, those guys? Um, I loved Crank. I know you didn't Crank like the, too. I know you didn't like Ghost Rider. I wasn't a fan of Ghost Rider, right. um, but I like what those guys have done in the past. Uh, the What is Vatican Tapes? Doc, do you have any what is on? What is Vatican Tapes? Vatican Tapes is basically um, a film that goes into the Vatican hiding tapes about exorcism, and no, nothing, not, not much is known. Um, and it's supposed to be oh, coming out. Wait, this the, the cast does include Michael Pena, 
and Jamon Hansu. That interests me. Yeah. So I'm, it, it, this one could come out of nowhere, uh, much like uh, the Lazarus Effect has. So it'd be interesting. There's a lot of stuff. Um, it'll be interesting to see if like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies make it out, right, Dave? Yes, 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 yes. I know crazy. you'd be crazy about that. And then, uh, you know, I don't want to keep going. There's a, a long list of just crazy stuff coming out. Uh, but we have, is there, well, before we get moving into the spotlights, is there anything else we want to say about the 10 that are on our list? Um, I do want to emphasize that I like Vix and I'm really excited for Jurassic World. Though there's more cautious optimism. Cause I really like the director who did Safety Not Guaranteed, which is one of my favorite films from 2012. But at the same time, I don't know how we can go from this one independent movie and work within the studio system to make the Jurassic World movie. I like the premise that they're going with. I like the cast that they have and a lot of these other elements. But it could very easily screw itself over with all that potential. So I'm cautiously optimistic yeah. on that one. I guess Jurassic World is another sequel that I kind of overlooked. Yeah, completely yeah. overlooked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but it also has Chris Pratt. So yeah. and he's writing a pretty big high. Um, uh, right now. And also riding on a motorcycle with raptors. Down. Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of that, you know, we, I think we even said on our, when we heard about this film being made, they were kind of like, ah, oh no. And then when the trailer came out, our tunes kind of changed a little bit because they made a kick-ass trailer. Speak for yourself. Some of us didn't. <laughs> Some of that us didn't. That trailer was awesome. There you go. That's what awesome. I want to hear. <laughs> It made me very, very excited. I'm super. Plus, at least, like, can we at least movie. agree? Can we at least agree that, like, they're not, at the very least, not trying to recreate the exact same movie like the last two sequels did. Like, they're at least. No, although something to be fair, we we know that shit's going to go horribly wrong. I mean, well, like we know every she's gonna Jurassic go wrong, Park movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we know she's going to go wrong, but stuff like the park actually being operational and right. trying, no, like, the fact that people are, like, kind of done with it within the 10 years that it's been out. And I think, like, they could play with that theme park element in a way that the other films really haven't. Even, like, the first Jurassic Park had a lot of, like, that imagery, but didn't play with it nearly as much as I think this one will attempt to, which I think is an interesting way of looking at it. I agree. I totally agree. Well, I got a question for you. Jurassic Park. Is that a sci-fi film or a horror film? Well, it's a bit of both. Um, I definitely say like it's the generic premise of sci-fi. Then all those themes of dinosaurs are genuinely horrific. Like a lot of such that raptor chase in like the with Laura Dern. That's horrifying, Doc. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of it that is that there's it's like when the um, T Rex chases after him. That's that's your monster movie right there. Let's go faster. Yeah, yes, must go faster. <laughs> oh, good. And, uh, and I think this film captures that far better than, uh, the, the two sequels in between. Just based on the trailer, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, the based on trailer. That's all we have, right? Yeah. That's all we have. Um, uh, we, Victor Frankenstein and Crimson Peak are, are both period pieces, much like, uh, the, uh, what the woman in black two. Um, kind of interesting to have a couple highlighted, uh, films that are, are, are like that. I like uh, that you had it, to go to Woman in Black too for that. Uh, well, you know. Like just, of all the period piece of horror films that we had to go, like the one that happened to come out earlier this year, that forgettable piece of shit that I've basically completely forgotten. Yeah. Well, I don't think Victor Frankenstein and Crimson Peak are going to fall into that category. Um, I think they're going to excel. I'm really yeah. looking forward to this. Uh, but I do like the idea that, you know, we're getting, those kind of films. I, I, I like those. I like horror set in that period. Kind of, that's my hammer background coming in. It's hammer. Yeah. yeah. It's the hammer stuff. Um, yeah. So I am kind of biased in that respect. So it's going to be a big year. There's going to be a lot of stuff. Uh, these are definitely 10 films that we will be covering in 10 of the next 52 episodes. Right. At least, at least. Yeah, at least. <laughs> All right. So, uh, there were so many as I kind of rattled off a few in between there that we, um, we kind of came up with some spotlights. These are odd picks, uh, at least, uh, for the most part, there's one big one in there. And we're going to start off with Vixen talking about her film, Ex Machina. Okay, so I have to pull up my synopsis <laughs> on this. Um, and this will be a very short 
short description, but basically Ex Machina is a sci-fi thriller, uh, and it's from the person who did 28 Days, I believe. Um, and it's a young programmer is selected to participate in a breakthrough experiment in artificial intelligence by evaluating the human qualities of a breathtaking female. Um, and so it says, Caleb, a 24-year-old coder at the world's largest internet company, wins a competition to spend a week at a private mountain retreat belonging to Nathan, the reclusive CEO of the company. But when Caleb arrives at the remote location, he finds that he will have to participate in a strange and fascinating experiment in which he must interact with the world's first true artificial intelligence housed in the body of a beautiful robot girl. And you're about to hear a train. <laughs> and, <laughs> the accent, the. Uh, so I'm going to mute this for a second, but talk amongst yourselves if you think that sounds like an interesting movie. Well, I, I, go ahead and stay on. We'll we'll put up with the train because uh, okay. Vixen, I want you to answer some questions. I want to know. Sure. I want to know. I can. I want to know what about this this particular film interests you to put it on this list. So um, I think it's an interesting premise. I love research. I love robots. You take the two and stick them together in a movie, and you have a movie I am excited about. Um, I like the idea of this little programmer guy who gets this really fantastic week-long vacation at this resort, and then, you know, things, when he gets there, become horribly not what he thought they were going to be. I mean, it's, it's described as a sci-fi thriller, so... You know, I'm guessing that when he gets there, it is it is not all he was expecting and not all he was hoping for. And so there's a lot about that premise that I like. I always am interested in anything that has to do with robots and artificial intelligence. I think it'll be, I hope it will be, a very smart script and um, will be very interesting. But also, you know, anytime you have robots and artificial intelligence, it has the potential to be creepy because the expectation is that these are things that will lack empathy and lack human emotion. And so that can lend a level of creepiness that you don't get with some other things. Mm. So I just I think it'll be interesting. So a little mentioned, I'm mainly excited for it because of the director, which is his directorial debut of screenwriter, Alex Garland, who you might know from his scripts with 28 days later, sunshine, never let me go. And dread. Dread. Right. 28 totally. days later, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's, I think it's going to be a really good movie. I think it's, it's a smart plot. I think it's a little bit different. Um, and I think if it's, if it's executed well, it can be a really interesting film. Tom. So I'm excited. Excellent. Excellent. Thomas, you have probably the highest profile film on the uh, spotlight picks. Um, the, as you alluded to, it's the one sequel that we're going to be talking about. Why don't you share what that is? Yes. Uh, my film that I'm very excited for, and then like goes more into genre because we talked to most of the horror films I was genuinely excited for on the main list. So I decided to go with more of a genre piece and that genre piece is Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, the new entry in the now 30 year dormant <laughs> Mad Max series. Literally, 85 was the last movie. Wow. Um, so you have, uh, it's directed by George Miller, who directed all three of the previous films and stars Tom Hardy, Charlie Theron, and Nicholas Holt. And I'm really excited for this one because that cast is amazing. Two, I love George Miller a lot. I mean, I've loved that dude ever since I first watched Babe and I cried and I still cry when I watch Babe. Um, but three, more importantly, Trailers look spectacular. The action scenes are works of art. Just the way that they're constructed and the, the CGI imagery and just like all of it is so beautiful looking and it just looks like such an ostentatious, ballsy, all out weird George Miller Mad Max movie again. Just like Nicholas Holt in the trailer in general just does that. And not to mention my favorite shot in the trailer is there's a point where there's a dude playing a guitar behind a giant tower of speakers on a car that's blazing through the post-apocalyptic desert. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want to see that movie. That alone <laughs> makes me want to see that movie. Oh, I'm looking forward to this one uh, so much, so much. Now, this one kind of shares a similarity to Jurassic World, where it was one where, like, uh, because it took so long to be, you know, once it was announced to be filmed and to actually, you know, get a release date that you kind of felt there was going to be a disaster 
And then we got the trailer. Yeah. Uh, so it, the similarity is that the trailer has, you know, resurrected our interest in this film. Though I think it would be less in the way that World, Jurassic World has a few of its doubters. I would say there would be less doubters if the original director returned. Let's just say that, right? Right? Because, I mean, like, oh, well, yeah, Miller, Spielberg came back. Is that what you're saying? Like, if Spielberg came back to that, yeah, it's the same thing with, like, with, like, Miller coming back. I think that gives a lot more people hope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, they're also, you know, you got Tom Hardy replacing Mel Gibson, so. Yeah, which that's a, that's a wise choice. It's one of the few times where I think a good choice to get rid of that original <laughs> star. Not, not, not the best guy to put out there in the starring view. No, but it, it is something to, you know, well, it has been 30 years to replace your lead. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the vision, it, it, it just has such, just a vast array of imagination in it that it's, it looks like it expands on everything that we've seen and, and, you know, it doesn't feel, it feels similar, but yet it feels totally unique and to its own. So I'm excited about that. Definitely. What a lovely day. <laughs> and it also has uh, I can't remember the character's name all of a sudden, but from the first film is returning the toe yeah, cutter. The, the guy who played the main villain in the first movie is returning. We don't know if it's the same part, uh, but he I'm can... very curious to see what his role in the movie is. Yeah, and, sure. he, and he played toe cutter in the first one, right? Yes, was that his name? Uh, but that's that's pretty. And is he the one that has the mask on his face that? Yeah, the big, like, um, almost Twisty the Clown-esque mask. Yeah, Twisty the Clown-esque, yes. Very much so. But uh, far more far more horrific in some strange way. It really looks great. And then uh, 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 Charlize Theron has her, her arm missing. Yeah, the robot arm. Yeah, so. And Nicholas Holt being, I'm not really sure. It, he, is he kind of playing a, a replacement for the, uh, the, the guy that used to fly around that little copter plane? Oh, God. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But, like, to be fair, that's half of the characters, and especially, like, Thunderdome, are that character, pretty much. We're just like, they yell weird things and they're Australian. Like that. <laughs> that's basically half the cast of any of these movies. All right. Dave. How you doing, Dave? I am here. Um, I'm, I'm excited to hear about yours because I know this is one I know the least about, and it has uh, the... the a very interesting title. What what is this film? Yes, it does. This is an actual, honest to God, horror movie. Uh, it's called Blood Sucking Bastards. Uh, it stars uh, my favorite actor from uh, Cabin in the Woods and and real life Shaggy Fran Kranz, who played that kind of hipster pothead dude in mm, Cabin in the Woods. Okay, very you know. Yeah, yeah very <laughs> but I loved him in the movie. I thought he was great. He kind of grounded everything with his little s- smart ass remarks. Uh, this one is uh, being touted as an action horror comedy, which kind of scares me a little bit. But I have seen the trailer for this, and it is actually quite, quite good. Uh, the basic premise is uh, it's kind of a Shaun of the Dead meets Office Space kind of thing, kind of a slacker guy working at a nowhere, do nothing job. Uh, he's, uh, filling in as a sales manager. He thinks he's going to get the job, but instead they bring in someone from the outside. Uh, he loses his girlfriend on that same day. And it turns out that the new boss is a fucking vampire <laughs> and starts feeding on all his, uh, coworkers. And, uh, he must, uh, pick up the mantle and defend his life and the life of his coworkers. Um, it's a lot of fun. The, the trailer is a little over two minutes long. Uh, I got to post it up at horrorchannel.com. You need to, if you haven't seen it, you need to go check it out. It's very witty, uh, very bloody. Uh, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. it. It could be kind of a sleeper kind of thing. It could be one of those ones that just kind of sneak up and, uh, you know, at the end of 2015, it's on our top 10 list. Maybe, maybe. 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 (laughs) Uh, Do you have any idea when this is going to be released, or is it VOD, I imagine? Uh, Yeah, nothing nothing right now. uh, It's playing at, I believe, Slamdance? Or Sundance. It's one of the, one of the dance, uh, <laughs> one of, one of the dance festivals, uh, here in the next week or two. Uh, and, uh, of course, somebody will, uh, will inevitably pick it up. I would, uh, imagine VOD or, or Blu-ray is in its future. Yeah. It looks like an I, uh, IFC kind of film, doesn't it? Uh, it does. It does. Very much so. Or magnet. 
Man, well, Magnet tends to be more international kind of stuff, but uh, IFC Midnight definitely. This would be right in their uh, in their up their alley. Hmm. And it's apparently written by a comedy troupe called Doctor God, which that entices me alone. <laughs> Doctor God, <laughs> Doctor like D R period G O D. Hmm. Yeah. So I don't know where to go with that. It kind of came up out of nowhere. Nobody even knew it existed. And this week the trailer came out and everyone's talking about it. So I like out what I see. Nice. Nice. Santos, how are you feeling about your headache still with you? Yes, it is. Oh, well, uh, see if you can bear with us and share your film. Um, okay. The, the one film that I, I, I did some research. I didn't just pull this out my ass. As I want, <laughs> as I want to do, uh, did a little bit of research. And, uh, the one title that we talked about this briefly in the past that kind of gets me, kind of gets a rise out of me is called Bone Tomahawk. And, uh, the synopsis is simply one sentence. It says, four men set out in the wild west to rescue a group of captives from cannibalistic cave dwellers. It's directed by Someone who I've never heard of before. S, written and directed by S. Craig Zoller. I don't know who Mr. Zoller is. Um, but it's not, that's not what interests me about it. it first of all, it kind of sounds a little bit like, um, The Descent to me. And I love The Descent. Uh, and I'm hoping it has that same vibe, but it's the cast. It's got a great fucking cast. It's got fucking Snake Plissken. Kurt Russell's in it. Patrick Wilson, uh, Insidious, Matthew Fox, David Arquette, Richard Jenkins, Michael Pere, Sid fucking Haig <laughs> is in this movie. <laughs> Sean Young. It's got a great cast, and I can't, I just truly believe that this cast was, they, 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 they that it's a great script. And they saw this script and they were like, I want to be part of that movie. It sounds like a lot of fun to me. Um, but there is no trailer. There is nothing except what I just read to you. And I am strictly going on instinct by saying, I think Bones Tomahawk is going to kick ass. I could be wrong. Lord knows that's happened once or twice in the past. But I think this movie is going to be pretty freaking awesome. For just, just to have Kurt Russell and Sig Haig in the same movie, Sid Haig in the same movie, that, that to me right there just says awesomeness. And uh, it, it's 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 all it's all ice cream after that, as far as I'm concerned. It's all concerned. ice cream. It's all it ice cream. Be, I am curious to see what exactly drew Russell to the project because he really has done very little since Death Proof. Exactly, and, he like, doesn't do much. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think it, like, it's, it's going to be this, be... and then the. I know he's doing the new Fast movie, but this is the one of the only things he's done in the recent past. So I'm very curious to see what drew him here for sure. Yeah, I'm just, I just dig the vibe it, it gives off just from that line. It's in post production, so they, I mean, I see it, the summer 2015 release, but. Yeah, nothing you know, firm, right? Nothing there's firm. There's nothing firm. It's just, I'm hoping it gets, comes out this year anyway. And I'm hoping it's theatrical. Though, I haven't seen Kurt Russell on a big screen in, since that, since, uh. Death Proof. Uh, yeah, Death Proof. So. Mm. Now, we'll see. does horror westerns have? Is what is the the top film for being a horror western? Was it um, was it the not the Borrowers the the shoot what was the name of that movie? The Borrowers. The Borrowers. That was really good, and that was a horror western about some creatures in the wild west that. Burrowed, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, but I can't. I'm trying to think of other horror westerns. Like, there's not many. There are some. Uh, uh, a lifeline. Technically, people. you could argue High Plains Drifter is a horror western. Basically, <laughs> well, there, there there are lots of theories behind High Plains Drifter. Yeah, they. You know, he's supposed. But, to but there aren't that many high profile ones. The very no, ones. no. Uh, I'm trying to think of one, and I really can't. Uh, so this one could break the mold there. I'm hoping it's, 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 if nothing else, that, that in itself points to its uniqueness because there aren't a lot of horror westerns. So, I always thought of John Carpenter's Vampires as a western, but it's really not. There's no cowboys and Indians, but it's just got that western vibe to it. That's true. Mm-hmm. Actually, you're right. We can go back to Billy the Kid meets Dracula. 
Nah, <laughs> I don't think I don't think anybody wants to do that. So uh, you know, uh, I just I just dig the vibe, and I like a good western. I likes me a good western. There aren't that many. Okay, I like a good one. So. And uh, your choice, Doc? My choice is an odd choice for me, but I guess when I uh, kind of give a little bit of a description, you might see why it appealed to me. It's from uh, director Rodney Asher. He directed the the film uh, Room Two Three Seven that we, uh, we we reviewed. That I think. The Shining film. The Shining film. We did that early in our episodes. Yep. And it's uh, another documentary. It premieres here shortly at one of the dance things. I think this one, uh, not dance, but uh, what is it? Um, uh, dance Dance Revolution. Dance, so, 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 so you think you could dance? Sundance. Sundance. Um, <laughs> God, you guys are killing me. Or I'm killing myself, one or the other. Uh, but it's called The Nightmare. And it takes, uh, according to the description on Facebook, it takes the horror of found footage film to the next level because this time what you're watching is actually real. What they mean by that is he explores the nature of nightmares and recreates them and um, is supposed to give some, I guess, hypothesis on what they're all about and how they Well, specifically, connect. from what I read on it, it's about sleep paralysis. Right. You know, like that, that sense of horror that you have when like you're dreaming and you can't move and there's some horrible, horrific thing going on in your head that you can't get away from. Right. Where you're, where you're stuck. Yes. Doug, uh, which sounds just, if they were recreating that, it just sounds like it's going to be insanely scary. And, and to be in a documentary kind of film is going to give it that, that feel of authenticity that I think is, it has the potential to really resonate. Uh, the images that they've released here recently are, are really frightening to me. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of this stuff is what inspired people like Wes Craven to make Nightmare on Elm Street, just like that idea of sleep paralysis. And how people even like die in that state. Like, that's a really fascinating topic. I totally agree with that. Yeah. So it, it's a little different for me, uh, to pick this kind of film because it's far from, you know, full found footage or 3D really? or a something. Found but found footage film ish is <laughs> not typical because you love these things. Yeah. So, uh, that's mine. And, uh, it, I'm, I'm looking forward to catching them. It's, uh, I'm hoping we get the chance to do it this year. Is there anything else we want to say about these five films? I believe Bonehaunt, Bones Hunter Hawk will be the best out of them. Uh, I don't know. Mad Max. Mad Max is going to be tough to beat. I think Mad Max. You, Ma- you said the five. The five that we just spoke about. The five we just yeah, spoke Mad about. Max. That's right. My yeah, one five. was Mad Max. Oh, okay, okay. I'm the times was Mad Max. <laughs> so, uh, so going over the five, uh, again, Vixen had Ex Machina. Thomas had Mad Max Fury Road. Dave had Bloodsucking Bastards. The Black Saint had Bone Tomahawk, and I had The Nightmare. Uh, look for those films. Those are, you know, other than Mad Max. Mad Max kind of was, 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 would have been on the list, but was pulled off because it was more sci-fi, but then we brought it back in. Or apocalyptic. I don't know. How would you describe Mad Max? Because it's not horror, but it's not sci-fi, is it? Uh, it's, it's more vaguely sci-fi. Like, it's, it's, it's more like action. It's like post-apocalyptic action. That's yeah. pretty much how I describe it. <laughs> I don't know. You know, that big old, I don't know what you call it in the trailer, that big, that tornado, that fucking fire tornado, that's, that's pretty fucking horrible. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's horror to me. And they're driving into that shit. That's like straight up horror. And but, driving into it and literally driving into people who are being flung from it. Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's, that's the awesome part. <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> they're just like pelting them with it. <laughs> I don't know if gonna IMAX, man. Oh, man, that, it's, it's going to be that, insane. That's going to be so amazing in IMAX. Holy crap. Mm-hmm. And, and, and as to Vixen's choice, I actually read, I was reading Time a couple of weeks ago, and there's a little bit about that film in there. I don't, oh, cool. But uh, actually, it was more a discourse on on AI and stuff. But there was a little bit about that film, and uh, they were looking forward to it too. They were like, uh, they liked the ideas behind it. Yeah. I'd never heard. Yeah, of I it think before. it's gonna. I think it's gonna be really good. Yeah, a little dystopia in your utopia always works. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. All right, there it is. 2015 is gonna be crazy, or 2015, as you guys like to do. 